Hello guys, this is the Horror Archive, and today we're going to be reading the first story in our lineup of scary stories, and it's going to be Night of the Living Dummy by R.L. Stein. The tagline says, he walks, he stalks. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Chris Powell struggled to get her twin sister's attention. Lindy Powell glanced up from the book she was reading to see what the problem was. Instead of her sister's pretty face, Lindy saw a round pink bubble nearly the size of Chris's head. Nice one, Chris said without much enthusiasm. With a sudden move, she poked the bubble and popped it. Hey! Chris cried as the pink bubble gum exploded onto her cheeks and chin. Lindy laughed. Ha <laughs> ha! Gotcha! Chris angri angrily grabbed Lindy's paperback and slammed it shut. Whoops! You lost your place! She exclaimed. She knew her sister hated to lose her place in a book. Who, who, who wouldn't hate to lose their place in a book? God. Lindy grabbed the book back with a scowl. Chris struggled to pull the pink gum off her face. That was the biggest cock I ever um, bubble I ever blew she said angrily the gum wasn't coming off her chin I've blo <laughs> I've blown much bigger than that Lindy said with a superior sneer Whew. somebody these two twins obviously have a competition complex going on I don't believe you two their mother their mother muttered, making her way into their bedroom and dropping a neatly folded pile of laundry at the foot of Chris's bed. You even compete over bubblegum? We're not competing, Lindy muttered. She tossed back her blonde ponytail and returned her eyes to her book. Both girls had straight blonde hair, but Lindy kept hers long, usually tying it behind her head or on one side in a ponytail, and Chris had hers cut very short. It was a way for people to tell the twins apart, for they were nearly identical in every other way. Both had broad foreheads and round blue eyes. Both had dimples in their cheeks when they smiled. Both blushed easily, large pink circles forming on their pale cheeks. Both thought their noses were a little too wide. Both wished they were a little taller. Lindsay's best friend, Alice, was nearly three inches taller, even though she hadn't turned 12 yet. As basic genetics people. Did I get it all off? Chris asked, rubbing her chin, which was red and sticky. Not all, Lindy told her, glancing up. There's some in your hair. Oh, great, Chris muttered. She grabbed at her hair, but couldn't find any bubblegum. Gotcha, Lindy said, laughing. <laughs> You're too easy, Chris uttered an angry growl. Why are you always so mean to me? Me? Mean? Lindy looked up with an up in wide-eyed innocence. I'm an angel. Ask anyone. Exasperated, Chris turned back to her mother, who was stuffing socks into, her, into a dresser drawer. Mom, when am I going to get my own room? On the 12th of never, Miss Powell replied, grinning. Chris groaned. Ugh, that's what you always say. Her mother shrugged. You know we don't have a spare inch, Chris. She turned to the bedroom window. Bright sunlight streamed through the filmy curtains. It's a beautiful day. What about, what are you two doing inside? Mom, we're not little girls, Lindy said, rolling her eyes. We're 12. We're too old to go out and play. Did I get it all? Chris asked, still scraping pink patches of bubblegum off her chin. Leave it. It improves your complexion, Lindy told her. I wish you girls would be nicer to each other, Miss Powell said with a sigh. They suddenly heard shrill barking coming from downstairs. What's Barky excited about now? Mrs. Powell fretted. The, l the little black terrier was always barking about something. Why not take Barky for a walk? Don't feel like it, Lindy muttered, nose in her book. What about those beautiful new bikes you got for your birthdays? Miss Powell said, hands on hips. Those bikes you couldn't live without? You know, the ones that have been sitting in the garage since you fucking got them. Okay, okay, you don't have to be a sarcastic mom, Lindy said, closing her book. She stood up, stretched, and tossed the book onto her bed. You want to? Chris asked Lindy. Want to what? Go for a bike ride. We could ride to the playground, see if anyone's hanging out at school. 
You just want to see if Robbie is there, Chris said, Lindy said, making a face. So? Chris said, blushing. Go on, get some fresh air, Miss Powell urged. I'll see you later. I'm off to the supermarket. Chris peered into the dresser mirror. She had gotten most of the gum off. She brushed her short hair back with both hands. Come on, let's go out, she said. Last one out is a rotten egg. Oh, gotta, gotta love that, that old school stuff. She darted to the doorway, beating her sister by half a step. As they burst out the back door, with Barky y yipping shrilly behind them, the afternoon sun was high in a cloudless sky. The air was still and dry. It felt more like summer than spring. Both girls were wearing shorts and sleeveless t-shirts. I'm pretty sure they're called tank tops. Lindy bent to pull open the garage door, then stopped. The house next door caught her eye. Look, they've got the walls up, she told Chris, pointing across their backyard. That new house is going up so quickly. It's amazing, Chris said, following her sister's gaze. The builders had knocked down the old house during the winter. The new concrete foundation had been put down in March. Lindy and Chris had walked around on it when no workers were were there trying to figure out where the different rooms would go and now the walls had been built the construction suddenly looked like a real house rising up in the midst of tall stacks of lumber a big mo a big mound of red brown dirt a pile of concrete blocks and an assortment of power saws tools and machinery no one's working today lindy said they took a few steps toward the new house who do you think will move in chris wondered Maybe some great-looking guy our age. Maybe some great-looking twin guys, huh? Uh-huh, wink-wink, nudge-nudge. Yuck! Lindy made a disgusted face. Twin guys? How drippy can you get? I can't believe you and I are in the same family. Uh, yeah, who the hell says drippy? I mean, come on, R.L. Stein. Was that, what? I was born in 89 and raised in the 90s, I mean... I don't recall anyone ever saying the word drippy. Chris was used to Lindy's sarcasm. Both girls liked being twins and hated being twins at the same time. Because they shared nearly everything, their looks, their clothing, their room, they were closer than most sisters ever got. Well, you know, it's a proven fact, I'm pretty sure. You, pr I'm not going to bother looking this up. If you're reading this, you can. That... Most twins, so they say most twins are connected some in some way or fashion where they can, like, read each other's minds or some shit like that. So that's not exactly new, R.L. Stein. Maybe it was new back then, but it's not new now. But because they were so much alike, they also managed to drive each other crazy a lot of the time. No one's around. Let's check out the new house, Lindy said. Chris followed her across the yard. A squirrel halfway up the wide trunk of a maple tree watched them warily. Yeah, because that's something you really need to talk about. They made their way through an opening in the low shrubs that divided the two yards. Then, walking past the stacks of lumber and the tall mound of dirt, they climbed the concrete stoop. A sheet of heavy plastic had been nailed over the opening where the front door would go. Chris pulled one end up of the plastic up and they slipped into the house it was dark and cool inside and had a fresh wood smell the plaster walls were up but hadn't been painted careful lindy warned nails she pointed to the large nails scattered over the floor if you step on one you'll get lockjaw and die what? i guess you mean like tetanus or something you wish chris said i don't want you to die Lindy replied, just get lockjaw, she snickered. Ha <laughs> ha, Chris said sarcastically. This must be the living room, she said, making her way carefully across the front room to the fireplace against the back wall. A cathedral ceiling, Lindy said, staring up at the dark, exposed wooden beams above their heads. <laughs> Neat. This is bigger than our living room, Chris remarked, peering out the large picture window to the street. It smells great, Lindy said, taking a deep breath. All the sawdust, it smells so piney. They made their way through the hall and explored the kitchen. All those wires on? Are, th are those wires on? Chris asked, pointing to a cl cluster of black electrical wires suspended from the ceiling beams. 
Why don't you touch one and find out? Lindy suggested. You first, Chris shot back. The kitchen isn't very big, Lindy said, bending down to stare into the holes where the kitchen cabinets would go. She stood up and was about to suggest they check out the upstairs when she heard a sound. Huh? Her eyes widened in surprise. Is someone in here? Well, yeah, y'all are. Chris froze in the middle of the kitchen. They both listened. Silence. Then they heard soft, rapid footsteps close by, inside the house. Let's go, Lindy whispered. Chris was already ducking under the plastic, heading out the doorway opening. She leapt off the back stoop and started running toward their backyard. Lindy stopped at the bottom of the stoop and turned back to the new house. Hey, look, she called. A squirrel came flying out a side window. It landed on the dirt with a with all four feet moving and scrambled towards the maple tree in the Powells' backyard. Lindsay laughed. <laughs> Just a dumb squirrel. Chris stopped near the low shrubs. Are you sure? She hesitated, watching the windows of the new house. That was a pretty loud squirrel. When she turned back to the house, she was surprised to find that Lindy had disappeared. Hey, where'd you go? Over here, Lindy called. I see something. It took Chris a while to locate her sister. Lindy was half hidden behind a large black trash dumpster at the far end of the yard. Chris shielded her eyes with one hand to see better. Lindy was bent over the side of the dumpster. She appeared to be rummaging through some trash. What's in there? Chris called. Lindy was tossing things around and didn't seem to hear her. What is it? Chris called taking a few reluctant stamps toward the dumpster. Lindy didn't reply. Then, slowly, she pulled something out. She started to hold it up. Its arms and legs dangled down limply. Chris could see a huge head with brown <laughs> hair. A head? Arms and legs? Oh, no! Chris cried aloud, raising her hands to her face in terror. Okay, guys, that is the first chapter of Night of the Living Dummy by R.L. Stein. You can expect maybe the second chapter within a couple more days. If, you're first, if this is your first time reading it, it's probably going to be already posted by the time you read it. But anyways, I will see you guys next time.